Hey guys, this is Ray with Benchmark, and today we're gonna be talking about raw data logging or static. So what we use is a base receiver like this, a web UI, and some governmental help and post-processing. We can know exactly where we are in real world coordinates anywhere in the world within millimeters of accuracy. Let's jump into it. So the first thing that we should talk about is the concept of static. So what static is, is taking a bunch of averaged positions from GPS satellites. The more satellites you have, the better with a base rover like this, and we take it over a long period of time. So in today's video, we took it at one second intervals for four hours. And then with that average position, we send it over to a governmental agency, either PPP or OPUS, to get that condensed into a very solidified position. Then we can use that positioning either in a local transformation, which we'll talk about at the end of the video, or to do a one point localization for future work. Now, an important distinction here is sometimes you don't actually need a real world coordinate to have an accurate and useful survey. You can use something called a relative coordinate system or a relative survey. And I'm gonna make a video in a couple weeks on what that means, how to differentiate, and how to establish when you need to tie in or do static, and when you can just do a relative survey and it will be more than sufficient. But we'll talk about that in a future video. So before we go outside and we actually show this setup of doing static, a lot of guys ask, how long should we do static? Why do we have to do it for four hours? So we have found here a benchmark and there's a video that I'll put a link to right up here of our actual real life test. But we have found that the majority of conditions do the best after four hours and anything past that you see diminishing returns. But you wanna do four hours so you get our RTK like solutions. So in a moment, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna show you the setup, but what you need to do static is you need a base receiver, you need to have a data collector with software that can do raw data logging, or you can use anything that can connect to internet. So this can be a cell phone, this can be a laptop, and you can just go straight into the web UI. In today's video, we're gonna show how to do it on a data collector because most surveyors are gonna have one already, but we also have a video on how to do it on the web UI. It's in our training academy survey assistant if you want to know more about that or get access to that site give us a call we'd be happy to provide it to you but let's go outside it's freezing today but let's go outside and get some static done so now we're outside we have our base set up for our static or raw data logging and Basically, it's just a few clicks of the button and then we just sit around for four hours. So all we do, this is already connected for our data collector and our Hemisphere S631 receiver. And then what you do is just on the screen, you click raw data logging. You're gonna give it a file name. We're gonna call this one Rhino for Rhinex. I think it's pretty funny. Then we're gonna click start logging. Then we just wait for it to initialize. And that is started to record. So now we would just leave this here, go sit in our truck and come back in about four hours. The reason we say four hours is we did a test. We'll put a link right here. And we found that that's a really great time to get the most accuracy out of your static logging. Four hours later. So it's been four hours. So now we're gonna take this down. We're gonna go inside and we're gonna process our data and send it over to Opus or PPP. All right. So we're now back inside, we have our receiver and we need to go get our data. So in today's video, we actually downloaded all of our static data right into the receiver, but you can also do it into an SD card. So we need to go retrieve that data from the web UI. So what you would do is you would log into the web UI and to connect to the web UI, what you do is you go into your internet settings, you're gonna look for rather than your typical internet, uh, you're going to look for the serial number of the receiver you were using. As we see it there, we click connect. Now we don't need to wait for it to say that it's connected. As long as it says connecting, we can go straight into our search menu. So then you can open up any Explorer. We're gonna use Chrome today. So you launch a web browser and then you go 192.168.1.1. Dot one, And then you click enter, that's gonna open a sign in. You're gonna put in your username and password. This is admin and this is an S631. Then it's gonna allow you to connect to your web UI. You're gonna go to the third drop down menu where it says download. You're gonna click on that. 
you're gonna click your file from today. We did Rhino today, so we would do that. We would download it. So now that it's downloaded, we need to convert it into a Rhinex file to send it off to PPP or Opus. Now we should pause here for a moment and talk about what PPP is and what Opus is. So these are both government agencies. Opus is based in the United States. PPP is based in Canada. And they're just government agencies that have a large database and some pretty powerful calculatory power that allow to do some post-processing to eliminate variables so you can get a millimeter accuracy position with your raw data logging. When we're using a hemisphere device, what you do is you first need to download a Rhinex converter. So I already have it on my computer, but to show you what you would do is you would just go to the file. We can send it right off to you. You just go Rhinex desktop software. Then once it's downloaded, you would open it. You would go to new profile. You would say load binary file. You go to your files. You're gonna select the one that we just downloaded from our receiver. We're going to see once it comes up and it says, okay, this is the right name. This is the right observer. Everything looks good. You're gonna go process Rhinex 3. Then once that is processed, it shouldn't take very long, uh, depending on the amount of points that you took, we can go send that off to Opus or PPP. So it's been a little bit, uh, the time, line on getting it back from Opus can vary, but they're usually very good about it. Now that it's come back to us, we can go take that position and we can do a bunch of different things. So one thing we can do is we can go survey off of that point because it's now our monument, let's call it. So we can localize onto that point. And if you wanna know how to do localizations, David has a video on how to do that and we'll put it right over here. But another thing you can do with the hemisphere specifically is the entire time we were doing our raw data logging, we could have been surveying. So we would have our base set up like this and we would have our rover connected to our base the normal way that we would go about doing it in RTK and then then we would do something where it's called a local transformation. Now, not all receivers can do this, but the hemisphere can. It's called the Athena logging. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking all of those positions and we're shifting them over to our now established known coordinate. So with a few clicks, you can be bang on and your survey would be done. So if you want to know how Athena log works or how to do a local transformation, then give us a call. It's on our Survey Assistant Academy. We'd be more than happy to give you some access to that and talk to you more about how to do static collection. So as a recap, in today's video, we talked about why you would do static, when it's helpful, and how to do it in the field, how to post-process it back at the base, and then how to use that data in RTK GPS survey. I'm Ray, or Real with Benchmark. See you in the next video.